Obesity is a global problem that affects everyone. Around the world, approximately 800 million people are living with the disease, while millions are at risk to get affected. Now, World Obesity Day is observed on March 4 every year to promote practical solutions and help people achieve and maintain a healthy weight while undertaking proper treatments. Dr. Chinasa Sir Amadi is a lifestyle medicine physician and the founder of Africa's first digital lifestyle medicine practice, Ariela Health and Fitness Limited. She joins us now to give more insight on the topic this morning. Good morning to you, Dr. Chinasa Sir Amadi. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure. We uh, are seeing or hearing uh, very alarming statistics uh, concerning obesity in the world and indeed Africa. Let's just bring it closer home. What um, are the figures? Uh, what, uh, what do we have hitting us here in Nigeria? Um, according to the Global Ob uh, Observatory, like Global Obesity Observatory, it shows that Nigeria is at high risk, actually. The Nigeria obesity risk is high, at 7.5 over 10. Between 2015 and 2020, uh, 20, uh, 2005 and 2016, there has been over a 100% increase rise in prevalence of obesity in Nigeria. And what are we linking this to? We're pretty much linking it to uh, our adoption of um, unhealthy uh, unhealthy habits one sedentary lifestyle you know our love now for westernized food westernized diet and um yeah a couple of other factors so yes it is it is really close to home it's very close to home we're catching up with the western world when it comes to the risk uh, prevalence when you say catching up it is really not something good we should catch up with the good things and not catching up with them something that will affect our lifestyle and indeed our health is it that we are not um, eating right or living well as a people in nigeria first of all i think we are culturally conditioned to asso associate an increased size with affluence mm. So first of all, we need to we, we we have a lot of reconditioning to do cultural reconditioning. So if we cannot um, 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 con uh, like re reorient ourselves, then that is a problem. So that's the first step. We have to know that the fact that someone is losing weight does not mean the person is poor, or does not mean the person does not have food to eat. So that's, that's the first thing first. Then secondly, we are beginning to associate the fact that eating unhealthy meals with, um, or eating westernized meals with affluence too. Somehow we like to be in that class, we like to we like statues so much in this, in this country. So you have to eat your sausages, I'm eating my, uh, you know, pastries, doughs, and that is like enjoyment. Mm. Yes. So... That, first of all, conditioning we need to do as a people, as a community, is the first step to pretty much changing this whole, uh, the, the declining the risk here in Nigeria. Right. Okay, um, um, Dr. Chenesa, let's also talk about the primary causes, uh, really. What, what are the things that one should know about obesity? Uh, is it that one is eating too much or one is eating, like you have mentioned, trying to be associated with the Western culture and pattern of eating? Now, we, prior to this time, maybe, maybe we didn't have all of the data and information in front of us. So what were we doing differently that uh, we're not doing now? So what, what the, the thing about obesity, obesity is it's a, it's multifactorial. That means that different things can cause it. It can be from lifestyle, it could be from ill health, certain diseases, it could be from certain medications, it could be from certain psychological conditions. So they are, it's, it's important, first of all, so I'll just go on the, on the aspect of lifestyle now, which is predominant, yes? Now, what are we eating? Before we eat more wholesome foods, we're eating more, um, you know, I, I remember growing up, if my mom makes moi moi of beans at home with vegetables and you're not eating it, then you're not hungry, pretty much. But now, if they, your child doesn't want to eat that, there is other alternative. Either a quick, fast juice with a quick, fast snack, you know, and those are alternatives we are giving. So we're seeing that we are creating an obese generation automatically. So by what we're eating, so we've changed what we learned, you know, and even our parents ate 
food more. I remember my grandma, they eat, they are making soups fresh. The vegetables are almost fresh. You can literally see, smell the fish from the soup, literally. But now we're not doing that anymore. So our, our type of eating has changed. And we're, we're, of course, with life, things are more stressful now. People want fast food. Hmm. Now, exercising, people, before, in those days, in the past, people walk a long distance to the farm. So even though they are not intentionally exercising, they are actually getting in physical activity. But now, we're sitting down behind the laptop, sitting down behind the keyboard, typing from morning, 8 o'clock till 4 p.m., then we get up, go to the bus stop, sit in the bus, sit on traffic for 4 p.m. till 8.30 p.m. and straight, you just eat and go lie down again. So we are literally not even moving. And even the distance we can move, there are bikes all over. You just get a bike quickly and jump over and go, go, use, uh, go use the bike. So those are things that have changed from then and now. All right, uh, Doctor, for, for sake of clarity, let's uh, try and um, uh, make this uh, you know, particular disease more understanding for Nigerians. You know, how can you really tell if you're obese uh, as against them being overweight, really? Well, there's a standard, yeah, the, 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 the BMI standard, which a lot of people have argued that if it's not standard for black people. So, but the standard, which is still what we use in the books in medical school, is that a BMI of above 30 is in the obese category. Now, um, how do you calculate your BMI? Is your weight in kg all over your height in meters squared. So if, for example, a 1.65 meters, you just square that, that is 1.65 times 1.65. Then your weight, let's say you're 100 kg. So it is 100 kg over your height in meter square. When you get that, the value, if it's above 30, then it is considered obese. If it's between 25 and 30, then it's overweight. Now, that is one way. The other way is also the waist circumference, which is what I like. Because the waist circumference is that uh, it tells you that women should have at least less than a 35 inch and men less than a 40 inch. Because studies have linked increased waistline with increased risk of hypertension, diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, that um, high cholesterol, and other metabolic syndrome. So it's important because of that linkage of increased waistline and that, that's the um, reference range that is given. For women, less than a 35 inch, so you just use the regular tape that the tailors use, put it out around your navel, and check what where are you at. Do you need to get it down or not? I think that's an easy one to do, even if you don't have a skill. Okay, so we're hoping that we can actually break this down so that, you know, the common man can understand. Still sounds very medical and very technical, but um, I'm hoping that we can just, you know, get to that point where it's very simple to understand. You have rightly mentioned that eating differently. Uh, so I want to find out, is it that eating too much or eating differently is what causes obesity? Now, it's not just about eating too much, but eating high, you can be eating small, but eating very high calorie. For effective weight loss, it's all about a calorie deficit, if you want. So what, whatever it's you're eating, you may be eating a piece of, take for example, some random shortbread. One piece is around uh, over 100 calories. And compare that with an apple which is around a 50 to 70 calories. So the apple is bigger in size, but the, uh, and the shortbread is smaller. So, but the calorie content is higher. The content of uh, saturated fat is higher in this. So it's not just about the size of the food. It's also about the calorie content of the food, one. It's also about how the food is made. We know that there are certain foods that are, certain things that are high in calorie, when it's high in saturated fat, when it's high in trans fat. So it's just about reading the label. But one thing is that it's easy, even if you don't want to count calories, I say eat foods that are closer to the ground. So you can, you can check the distance from your plate, from the farm to your plate. You can imagine it. <laughs> if you cannot imagine it, then know that should I be eating this in a large quantity or in a smaller, very, very small quantity. So that's an easy way. Don't even bother about the calorie content. Just what the, you can imagine 
vegetable noodles. You cannot imagine vegetable noodles. How did it become noodles? A spiral. Well, you can imagine vegetable soup. You you plucked from the farm. You but but you you will now. still have to use swallowed. You know, to eat the soup. Swallow is not the problem. The question is when we now want to eat swallow that is like a 10 year old baby's head. That's the problem. <laughs> you know, so that's it's important. It, you know, I always tell people in swallow and soup, the soup is the meal. But most of the time, we're using a tablespoon of obono soup <laughs> with a mouthful of swallow. So we, we misplace it. So we need to realize that the soup is the is the main dish. Then swallow is like is the accompanying support system. But but also, if you look at it, I mean, let's even talk about this practically. If you look at the soup, most times this is African, this is Nigeria. It's not every soup that has that vegetable content. For instance, you mentioned the ogbono soup, and you already know that there's going to be palm oil in it, and that's a lot already. Now that's where now we're not cutting food. They are cutting food that are high in calorie. Oils are high in calorie on all all forms of oils are all high in calorie. So we, it's very important to limit it as much as possible. That that the thing is that that cultural mindset. Yes, we are, we are culturally inclined that our soup we keep pouring in oil until your ancestors go. My child, it have do stop <laughs> stop pouring. We need to learn to start measuring these things. That is, we're not we're not used to measuring. We put in salt on you just keep sprinkling until oh, you hear the very voice bright. you stop. Yeah, you know, we just keep doing these things because we feel that we are culturally conditioned to think that there has to be so my soup has to be bright, my soup has to be red. So that's the cultural reconditioning we need to have. Obono soup doesn't have to be so oily. You can use even your tatashe bell peppers to get the redness that you need. The question is, will you, will your mind, agree that you have made a bono soup? All right. <laughs> or so or he, probably, <laughs> he probably might just be tatashi or bono soup. <laughs> That would be, that would be, no, that's on a lighter note, though. That would be a completely <laughs> different one. But, Doctor, it is a world obesity day today, but let's try and help people who are obese because oftentimes um, there is this uh, concept of um, body shaming and people who are naturally big are often, you know, made to feel bad and small, you know, about themselves. So how do you begin to help them? Because some people, they will tell you that uh, I... I, it's not like I'm eating too much. It's not like I have a low metabolism or something. It's just that um, uh, I have it in my genes, uh, genes that we are all very big and fat in our family. How do you help people, you know, who are obese and who want to, like, um, you know, make better decisions so that they can maybe lose weight and, of course, still feel good about themselves? So uh, I think there is a, in this concept of body shaming, there is a thin line. Because even sometimes I have been accused of body shaming because I'm like, hey, try to lose some weight because it's affecting your health outcome. And I'm like, uh, you know, your body, they love like, oh, your body shaming. I'm like, where's the point? Do you want, do, can we advocate without having it being considered body shaming? But that's by the way. Now, the thing is, your gene is not your destiny. Studies have shown that impact of your gene on your health status is not more than a 30%. So that means that you have a 70% chance of not being obese, even if everybody in your family is obese. Mm. That is the first thing. So you need to come to that point. Personally, at 16 years, I was already over 80 kg. Oh, wow. And I grew up knowing that everyone is big in my family. See my palms, my palms are really big. <laughs> so I always knew that. But now, at almost, you know, on my late 30s already now, it's, I'm not even up to a 75. And that is because I decided to break the jinx. So it's up to you. Are you ready to break that genetic, you, you know, you think that it, you, it may take, it will do extra, it will be extra work. There are some people that they, you feel they eat everything and they are not big. That's their lot. But that doesn't also mean they are healthy. Let's leave that for another conversation. Remember, the size doesn't de determine health status because there are some people that are very slim, they are hypertensive, diabetic, high cholesterol, which is even an independent risk factor for stroke. But we'll not go there yet. The issue now is once you're obese, do you want to lose weight first? 
Do you think you want to lose weight? Maybe because um, you want to improve your health. You want to be able to walk without panting. You want to be able to run and your knees are not hurting. Find a reason, a motivation to, you know, to do something. There are, sometimes and motivation is what will keep you going because losing weight, uh, trying to get over the obesity status is hard. But it is possible. The question is, are you ready to do all it takes? Some people say they've done everything. I'm like, really? Uh, uh, so, and Doctor, really let's, let's also talk about what the signs and symptoms would be. Like we know with malaria, with COVID-19, and with every other disease, there probably would just be a, a sign and a symptom for it. So uh, what would you say the, the signs and symptoms for obesity is? Like, like what I said earlier, first of all, just get the tail of tape. Yes, the, the tape the teller uses for measurement and check your waist, waistline circumference and see where are you at first. So do I need to start working? As a woman, is it above 35 inches? As a man, is it above 40 inches? Then that's the first step. Another thing is for some people, they start noticing that they are not sleeping well. For some people, they start noticing that either they start having breakouts because uh, like maybe acne, you know, they start noticing that or for some women, there is a change in their menstrual cycle. For some other people, they start getting tired easily, you know, so there are different, like what we call non-specific symptoms. This disease has non-specific symptoms. So different people may present different with different things. Know your body, know the point when your dress is tighter. So this dress I used to wear before, now you're not wearing it. It's not because you're older. It's now because you have increased because they, they dress in age. So once you notice that and you start taking action at that initial time, that is the that's the first thing. So, but the, the truth is, it starts with the mind. You have to condition your mind to do it and do it as a lifestyle, not doing it as a diet. That's where most people tend to feel, to jump into whatever diet is raining and then they get tired and fall out. So imagine that I want to be healthier for, the, for my life, for, for the rest of my life. When you healthy is the goal, weight loss pretty much is the side effect. All right, Dr. Amadi, although some of my colleagues here are just raising their hands in the air, they're telling me that my suits don't fit anymore, but I'm just going to pass, <laughs> let that pass. <laughs> but let's talk about, um, you know, uh, this obesity. Is it, uh, do we have situations um, in children or adolescents? And uh, because sometimes you see some children who are a bit chubby, is there obesity in children and how do we address that? Yes, there is obesity in children, and it's pretty much even glaring from their physical outcome. Now, the studies are showing that the, the rate of obesity in children is 10 times more than in the past decade. Like over, no, more, over 100% increase than the past decade. So this has also increased the risk of lifestyle diseases, diabetes, hypertension in children. Wow. So, yes. Now, so it's important for us to know there is this study that was done, the Global Burden of Disease Study, and it shows that one in 10 children born after the year 2000 will develop type 2 diabetes. And this was linked to the rising obesity rate among children. Mm. So that's the, that, that's the, the we, have, we have a lot of work on our hands. We as parents, I, I, that I said this generation of parents, we tend to gratify, we use food as a gratification. Like you do well, eat food. You cry, eat food. You don't want to speak to your neighbor, eat food. Your friend beats you, eat food. So every food is, uh, uh, is a consolation prize for everything. And that is where we need, we, we are getting it wrong. Unfortunately, and then the same thing, the same type of foods we're giving in their lunch packs is the same kind of foods we're giving at home. Mommy doesn't have time, daddy doesn't have time, so what is easier? Fast food. And fast food, I don't want to say what it leads fast to, but the goal as we as parents, we should start thinking, am I feeding my child? I, I, I met a, six, a mother who said her six-year-old eats 10 slices of bread. If she eats five, she cries. And I'm like, does crying, crying has never been known to be a cause of death, crying. <laughs> it has never been known. However, the risk of that bread 
what eating all that amount of bread as a six-year-old has had is linked to <laughs> death. So which one do you want? Are you speeding up your child? Are you shortening your life, your child's lifespan by making her not to cry now? All right, doctor, you know, this month of March is actually, you know, very special for women. Let's talk about um, women now because of some cultural beliefs and cultural practices that sometimes um, they tend to be victims in all of this, you know, specifically from the southeast, from the south, south, where a woman, after she gets pregnant and gives birth, she's asked to go to the fattening room. Is it something that we should be practicing, really? No. Mm. Why not? We shouldn't. Because it's just a, it's one of those cultural practices that is not important. I've still not understood the reason why the woman has to be indoors for three months. Yeah. I, mm. I don't understand that. There are certain, there are certain things that we, we, you see that there are certain things that we should start breaking and we should be willing to break it. We should be, we have to make efforts to break those cultural practices that are not favoring our health. So the woman is just sitting down day in, day out, teeth lie, eat, teeth lie, eat, eating, 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 eating. And after three months, the man is the same person who will go, wow. This was not the woman I married. I know. Who am you're I? just cracking me up here. You know, we need, we need to, you know, just, I mean, it's been very fantastic having you. But let's just move on because we probably might just spend the, the, the remaining time just laughing, uh, laughing out. Very interesting conversation, by the way. But generally, how can um, this be prevented? Now, this can be prevented by, first of all, one, we need to start eating more fruits and vegetables. That's the first thing. We don't eat enough fruits. And studies have even shown that eating up to five servings of fruits and vegetables a day reduces heart risk, heart disease risk by up to 25%. So even if not for the fact of you being uh, whether uh, fat or thin or anything, it's about improving your heart, your heart health. So um, having, I tell people invest, just invest 200 naira every day in either a fruit or just in a fruit is easy or fruit and vegetable invest 200 naira so either 200 naira cucumbers 200 naira apple 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 is a 200 naira oranges 200 naira garden eggs or carrots yes 200 naira eat any fruit any fruit in season go for that one mangoes that are, are coming out wait till when they come out well you'll get 200 naira maybe three or four <laughs> so invest 300 300 uh, two to 300 naira every day for your health that's the first step secondly anything we're eating we should try to be intentional with adding in some greens by the side you have your rice you have your beans adding greens you, are, you can just buy 100 naira 200 naira ugu to add in every day that will automatically reduce the portion of other higher calorie food that you eat the other thing is we need to start moving more so if you sit if you're uh, you have a sedentary type of work Every one hour, stand up for three minutes. Even if it's to walk to the photocopy machine, walk and see your colleague table. Just stand up every one hour for three minutes. So set your timer. Eight fifty-seven. I'll stand up and walk. Nine fifty-seven. I'll stand up and walk. You understand that? So that's an easy way, especially for busy professionals. Then, if you're going instead of taking a bike to the bus stop, please just walk or just go, brisk walk Inten be intentional about moving we need to start moving more another thing which we underestimate is power in obesity is sleeping if we're not sleeping we are pretty much not sleeping we're increasing the uh, appetite hormone which is ghrelin we're increasing cortisol stress hormone you know and you just want to be you, you know that if you're not sleeping at night you'll see that you're hungry in the night even if you're not hungry in the daytime so it's, you, it's, it's important to get in as much sleep as you can. Minimum is seven to nine hours. But I usually say, well, if you're in Lagos, you can do it six hours. But the goal is well, just try to, when you come back from work, keep your phone away. Most of the time, we spend a lot of time on our phones. Keep the phone away and then go in and sleep. That is very important. The other thing, we're not drinking enough water. Somebody is thirsty, they grab soda. I'm thirsty, you're grabbing, ju ha hello, what's happened? 
So it's important to be drinking in more water. You know, take it, the water is so hot. We should drink when, oh, I need a chill drink. And why do you need a chill drink? Get chilled water if you want chilled water. So whether hot or cold water, water does not make one get, uh, increase your waistline or anything. No, water is the, the only calorie-free fluid ever so it's not going to cost weight gain so that means it's not it's not correct so that is another important thing now as much as possible even if you say i cannot stop eating junk food tell yourself that okay i'll eat i will eat this maybe only on saturday or maybe only one meal on sunday or maybe you know just gradually until you're able to break it off totally or maybe when i go for that wedding tomorrow that is when i will have this there so not you buy that in and bring home, buy the junk and bring home, you know, keep it for those moments when you cannot control it. These are things that will really help. And of course, stress management, we need to effectively manage stress. We, we're living with so much stress now in our environment, like literally all, all Nigerians are stressed right now. But what can you do? If you cannot change um, the situation, you can change how you react to the situation. And that is one way, that's one thing I like to hinge on. If you cannot change the economy, you can change how you react to the economy. It, 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 it's not easy, but it's important for you, for your own personal health, and of course, so that it doesn't also, you don't increase the statistics. That it's important to realize that your gene is not your destiny. You have the power of, your life is in, is, is, is in your hands. Yes, it, you cannot control life or death, but you can control uh, you know, as I'm living, let me live healthy maximally. I want to be able to do this thing till I'm 75. And stop looking for quick fix. Fix. If you're looking for something to drink to burn the fat, if they told you that, please dispel that. That is just a marketing gimmick because you didn't drink anything that made the fat to congee inside your body. So you do not expect to drink something that will make it just melt and disappear. It's important to put in the work, think about lifestyle. The goal of weight loss is not to fit into a slimmer casket. The goal is a healthier you long term. Yes, did you get that? The goal of weight loss is not to fit into a slimmer casket. The goal is that you are healthier long term. And that yeah. is the reason why the theme of this year is everyone needs to act together now. We all need to do the work together. It's not a one person work. It's not only me. It's not only you, the whole family. So, all right. All right. Thank you so much, um, Dr. China Samadi. That's actually like. Um, not just a handful, that's like um, a whole lot that we have got in today. And it is actually a collaborative effort, you know, if we really need to stand this um, issue of um, overweight, obesity, and, uh, you know, getting better lifestyle, you know, in the board. We do appreciate your time and then thank you once again for joining us uh, to enlighten Nigerians and to improve their lifestyle, you know, amendments in North. We do appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. It is still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll be talking sports this time around. Stay with us.